Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So as I promised before I have brought the MSI GF65 thermal testing results for you and uh, as I said in my unboxing video I don't have this laptop for a long time uh, so I'll be doing as many tests as possible in this short period of time. This laptop belongs to my brother and he'll be leaving in the next few days so I have this laptop only for a short time. Now before showing you the thermal results uh, oh by the way uh, please ignore all the noise everywhere because I'm the fan is spinning it is very hot today uh, and i'm doing the thermal testing in this very hot day as well so um yeah keep that in mind i cannot it's really hot today that's what i'm saying anyways so before showing the thermal testing results keep some of the things in mind right uh, so this is the most powerful laptop that i have thermal tested on my channel so don't compare the thermal results of this laptop with those laptops so this is a first for my channel this is an MSI GF65 thin, so it is not a thick laptop. This is a pretty slim laptop, if you can see from here. It's a pretty slim laptop, and despite being a slim laptop, it is having a pretty power-hungry Intel Core i5 10500H, which is basically a rebranded Core i7 9750H, and those CPUs are really you know power-hungry. They are not the most efficient. It's based on Intel's 14 nanometer plus 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 architecture. And it also has a very powerful GPU, which is an 80 watt art, uh, which is an 80 watt 1660 Ti with 6 gigabytes of VRAM. So please, guys, don't compare the thermals of this laptop with Ryzen laptops with GTX 1650. So this is an, in another league when it comes to performance in you know in gaming as at least in gaming. And to top all of that, you know, already a thin package with pretty powerful uh, internals. MSI has put a very compromised back panel for this laptop. Uh, I hope you can see it over here. Uh, like this laptop, it has a very powerful thermal solution. It actually has the exact thermal solution from the MSI GL65. So the MSI GL series, which is much more expensive than the GF series, it shares the same thermal solution with this laptop. However, the problem is, uh, even though this has so many copper heat pipes, you know, five to six copper heat pipes and pretty far, pretty powerful fans, MSI has put this very compromised back panel on this one, which has a, which has vents, but it is not on top of the actual fans. As a result, when the fans spin, it is not able to pull as much airflow as it can, as it potentially can in the MSI GL series. So, uh, if MSI could have just, you know, put two simple air vents on top of the fans itself, it would have made a huge difference to thermals of this laptop but unfortunately msi hasn't done that so yeah i am quite disappointed i don't know why uh, companies do this kind of segregation between their products uh, this thing is compromised where the msi gl series is not compromised so without any further ado let's get to the thermal results of this laptop so yeah let's switch screens so in my uh, so in my uh, unboxing video i did show you the bios so once again, this laptop is super customizable. MSI has done a great job with the BIOS. It has a ton of features in it. So um, I have shown you already the settings in the BIOS. So so this so this MSI laptop does support undervolting. So uh, most of the Intel 10 Gen processors they don't support undervolting, but most of the MSI laptops do support undervolting. I think uh, Lenovo also provides undervolting support. But yeah, uh, so in this laptop you can enable uh, undervolting inside the bios itself you can apply your uh, undervolting uh, you can you can offset the voltage inside the bios itself you can change the clock speeds inside the bios itself so you can do all that but yeah uh, you just have to what you have to do is you have to go into the bios and enable the advanced bios i think the i think the it's it's right control right shift uh, right alt and f2 yeah so that's what you have to do and to enable the advanced bios so inside the advanced bios you have a ton ton of features so uh you can change your performance control you can you can you can you know you can enable uh turbo mass max technology you can disable it you can change your tdp configurations so you have your pl1 limit pl2 limit you have got you got your pl1 time window you can change that as well uh you got your pl1 pl2 limit it's itself you can uh provide your turbo uh, ratio so i mean it's got so many features it's awesome you know these features need to be on Ryzen laptops as well. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll just show you quickly the, all the settings inside the BIOS uh, on another screen. Uh, but yeah, it, this, this laptop is extremely customizable. You can do so many changes on this laptop to make it precisely as you want. 
uh, but I don't have the time to do that. As I said already, I don't have the laptop for a long time, so uh, I cannot do a precise, uh, you know, tuning of this laptop. But I'll get as close as possible. So, yeah, I hope these features come to other laptops as well. This this laptop has a, such an advanced BIOS. It's it's awesome. Okay, so uh, let's start with Cinebench R20. We're doing a test CPU. So we're keeping performance level at turbo and cooler boost mode is on. So it's at maximum fan speed. So here you can see the CPU package power, the CPU package temps, and the CPU core temperatures. On the right side, you can see uh, you know the clock speeds. So uh, let's do a run. Now, uh, Intel laptops don't work like Ryzen laptops. Here you can see initially this laptop will boost to its maximum you know like wattage, so it will go to 100 watts. So that's pretty crazy. I mean, 100 watts, that's crazy. And you can see uh, that's still not thermal throttling, but yeah, just now it's thermal throttle. So, so Intel laptops, you know, they have a short boost period. They, they boost to a certain uh, like wattage as long as they are below the uh, throttling temperature. And as soon it hits that one and then it drops down. And uh, so now you can see uh, it dropped down to 54 watts and now it's about, it's maintaining about 70 degrees centigrade, 70, 75 degrees centigrade and the clock speeds are down to 3.5 gigahertz all core. So this is how, you know, this is how uh, Intel laptops, uh, you know, work. They have a short boost period, they boost to their maximum frequency and then they drop down and maintain, uh, you know, all core, all core turbo of about 3.8, 3.7 gigahertz. So this was stock settings. So uh, it doesn't have any kind of undervolting or anything applied on it. So this is completely stock and uh, uh, so as you can see, it's performing this way. And uh, yeah, 100 watts, that's pretty crazy. I mean, uh, you have used Ryzen laptops and they reach a maximum of like 57 watts, whereas this laptop has an average of 54.9 watts, so 55 watts average when it comes to, uh, you know, a long-term TDP. Whereas, you know, Ryzen laptops, they have a boost of, maximum boost of about, uh, sort of like the 50, 50 watts, 54, 55 watts region. But this one has a maximum boost of 100 watts. So there comes the, you know, the efficiency difference between 14 nanometer plus 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 and uh, Ryzen 7 nanometer architecture. So the rest is about to end and uh, let's see how much we get. So we get a score of, so 2585. So that's very much low. That's, that's a lot lower than the Ryzen 4600H which gets about 3200 points on average and yeah so now let's now now what we will do is we will um, undervolt the laptop and uh, see what the temperatures are after we undervolt it so uh, yeah uh, so here you can see this throttle stop so throttle stop uh, I'm going to create a profile in this one and it's not the perfect profile guys as I said this I don't have this laptop for a long time I don't have time to precisely fine-tune it so I'm just going to give my best guess so normally I use negative one three five uh, millivolts in my um, Helios 300 so let's put 125 over here and uh, let's put the same for the CPU cache as well and let's see how well it does after this undervolt whether it crashes or not uh, if it crashes then you again have to you know uh, like you cannot put a, a very severe undervolt in because otherwise it will crash so so let's start with 125 uh, Okay, so the benchmark has started. Now let's see. So as you can see, since it's we have undervolted it, it will not reach that 100 uh, watt peak. So it will slowly, slowly rise to I think about uh, 80 watt and stabilize there until the boost period expires. The boost period is about uh, 30 seconds, where you can see all the cores are clocked at the maximum 4.2 gigahertz, and there is a no thermal throttling whatsoever. Make sure uh, keep in mind the maximum fans are enabled over here as well. And you can see and there is no thermal throttling. It is still maintaining 4.2 gigahertz all core. And there you go. There's the boost period. The boost period has expired now. There is no thermal throttling happening and the boost period has expired. And now it is maintaining 55 watts on average. And you, the difference you can see previously when it was maintaining a 55 watt average, it could only, you know, have a clock speed of all core clock speed of 3.49 gigahertz. But now after applying the undervolt, you can see it is maintaining an average clock speed of 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz across all cores. So this is the advantage of undervolting your Intel CPU. It's, it's, it's a sad thing that it is not yet available for Ryzen laptops. Although Ryzen laptops don't need these things because they're already so efficient. Uh, but yeah, if this feature was available for Ryzen laptops, it is available for Ryzen desktop CPUs. 
but it is not yet enabled for Ryzen Mobile. But this is an amazing feature. So you can see that with the undervolt applied, uh, the the clock speeds are high, the temperatures are low, and package power is also has has also dropped. So that's why I always recommend you undervolt your laptop, Intel laptop. I have been using an Intel laptop for a long time, and it's undervolted from day one. So yeah, you can see this is the benefit of undervolting, and you can see the test is about to get over. Let's see what score we get. Um, 2807 that's about a 10% boost right over 2885 so that's substantial so uh, let's see how undervolting affects gaming as well so for testing temps while gaming i ran far cry 5 benchmark repeatedly and it's clear that we can see a massive improvement in temperatures with the undervolt applied far cry 5 is quite cpu intensive and undervolting the laptop has led to drop in temperatures and rock solid clock speeds. However, if you want to drop your temperatures even further on top of the undervolt, you can simply lock all the 6 cores at 4 GHz as 6 cores running at 4 GHz is plenty for gaming. And in a pretty CPU intensive game like Far Cry 5, we lost just 1 FPS, which is in the margin of error stuff. But the drop in temperature is significant. To test my theory further, I tested CSGO, which is completely CPU bound. But in this case also, we only lost about 3% performance, once again in the margin of error. Lastly, I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a GPU bound game and we got exactly the same performance, which was expected. But once again, the drop in temperature is significant. So after testing a bit, I feel these are the best throttle stop settings for my unit, a 120mV undervolt with all 6 cores clocked at 4GHz. These settings provide the best balance of temperatures to performance in my case. Now remember guys, my undervolt settings may not apply perfectly in your case as not all chips are made equal and a lot depends on silicon lottery. So I recommend you guys to set up your undervolt profiles according to your needs and the games you play. So that's it for this video guys, thank you so, thank you so much for watching thermal testing video. Uh, the full review will be coming along with the game test, so I won't be able to test a lot of games for this laptop unfortunately, but I'll be testing the most, you know, uh, resource intensive, intensive games like, uh, you know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider or uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Red Dead Redemption 2. So most of the power hungry games, so uh, because that's the main difference between this laptop and your GTX 650 laptops. So yeah, stay tuned for all those videos. Right guys, um, once again, as I said, you can customize this laptop as much as you want. There are so many customization options inside the BIOS and in the, uh, inside the, you know, the MSI Dragon Center, as well as, you know, in the throttle stop software, you can do a lot of changes and make it as cool as possible. You can also, you know, open it up, change thermal paste and do all those things. This is a truly, uh, you know, enthusiast laptop. People, those who have tight budgets, uh, this laptop is recommended to those people who want the best possible FPS but at the lowest price possible. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share and subscribe to support the channel. If you want to purchase this laptop or any other laptop, links are down in the description. So consider purchasing on the links. It helps all the channel. So yeah, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay tuned. Peace.